Hey YouTube, this is Nick Bled, and I have a nice overview tutorial for you right now, and it's about the EVGA flow control software, which controls the CLC 280mm uh, closed loop cooler that I bought, okay, and uh, this, is, this helps keep the CPU nice and cool, and it helps you achieve higher overclocks by keeping the temperature stable so um, so the built-in components that help the CPU not burn out or just die on you from too much voltage or by you know because you're overclocking um, helps keep it stable and you're and you're able to have a much more stable overclock that won't crash your system um, but let's get into this user interface of this program right here so I have um, first let me just show you this is if you do download this program and you do have a CLC um, cooler from EVGA okay um, yours is not gonna look like this when you first download it, okay and I want to show you what I did which is very simple I'm gonna go when you go this option here select skin mine is on extra and this is basically the extra uh, user interface or advanced user interface I guess should have been what it is but um, it's just a skin but I like it like this when you click default it's gonna go back and the way you get to these settings is by clicking a little settings button over here next to the profiles so when you first install this program look for the look at the bottom of the user interface and go to profiles and there will be a little gear icon here on the side and that's how you get these options here okay those are the setting options but anyway let's just run you through this program the way I have it set up right now okay this button here is for cables now cables is a CPU overclocking uh, tool okay which when you click this for me it, this comes up and shows that um it can't be used right now um nor do i want to use it because i use ryzen master to overclock my cpu and i will be bringing out a tutorial on that shortly after this video um so stay tuned for that but um I don't have that installed or I, or I don't want to use it so I just leave it the way it is so this is useless for me but maybe you guys want to use it and check it out and maybe you can make a video on that but um the next icon we're gonna go to is the fan curve icon and when you click this it's gonna bring up fan curve window and you can custom set your fan curve okay guys so what you do here is you can click one of these gray square boxes on the fan curve graph and move them around to set your fan curve now mines will probably set up more like so okay and you can go all the way up but where it starts is here and you can't select that because that is a default point and the top one is a default point which is maxed out at 100% fan speed but um, that's how that one goes we're gonna exit out of that one alright now here right underneath the, sen the fan curve icon you can select the pump or the fan and that and this slider here controls the RPMs of the fan okay but if you look at pump there's nothing here but if you click fan which it'll be on automatically you'll see an auto function this is the one you want to use because it's the fan curve and this auto function here um, are related and um, have a relationship okay and they are intertwined with each other so just make sure that you know to keep that on fan um, and you'll be okay 
Now we have another another uh, button here, and it's and this is the default button. So basically, this resets everything back to factory settings from when you first installed the software before you change anything. So if you run into any issues as far as your profiles are concerned, um, just click that and it'll bring everything back to the way it was when you first installed the pro uh, the software. Now we have one more tab here, which is the apply tab. Now, if you make changes to your profiles and stuff, click apply if it lets you. Okay, click apply if you change anything on this user interface. To be honest, now profiles. We're gonna show you how to set up the profile. Now, I have one profile set up already, and what I'm gonna do is right now just deactivate these other two. But to show you how to create a new profile after changing any settings on this uh, software here, okay, you wanna want to activate the profile, right? So how you activate the profile, you right click on the number that you want to use, okay? And then when you right click that, okay, you're going to want to, um, you know, change whatever settings you want. And then to save that profile, you're gonna wanna left click it. And it's going to save and select that profile as active. Okay, guys. So that's in, and that goes on and on for the rest of these numbers here. You have up to 10 profiles you can, you could set up. Okay. What you have here um, on this menu um, section here is a hardware monitoring tab. So when you left click this, a nice hard, uh, a nice monitoring window will open and showing you the coolant temperature the pump speed temp uh, rpms and the fan speed rpms all right that's what you're going to notice but you're going to notice that the fan speed is not working because this program for some reason is not monitoring the cpu temp uh, temperature and it's not monitoring the fan speed at all so what it is monitoring is the temperature of the liquid inside the CPU block. And it's also monitoring the pump speed, aka your fan speeds in a sense. Okay. So um that's how that works in this program. So if these are not working for you, don't go crazy about it. Don't worry about it. It's just the way it is. Maybe they'll maybe they'll make an update to fix it. I'm not sure. The program is fairly new. I think it's about four four months old, maybe maybe five months old, something like that. So uh, it's fairly new. So give them time to fix it. Okay, guys. But um, anyway, the next tab is just a device tab, and it just shows you what device you're using, which is the closed loop cooler that I have installed here, cooling my CPU. So you know, you can click that, and nothing really happens. Now we're going to go to the LED tab of section now and when you click this LED here, right? It's going to shut off or on the LED on the CPU block. Okay. Now this is the main thing. This is going to turn off and on the function. So anything below this is actually going to affect the way the LEDs, um, um, um I guess activate or whatever so you have a breathing um function which actually does nothing so that's another glitch that EVGA needs to iron out because it's not breathing at all we have a pulse which actually just blinks off and on not really a smooth pulsing kind of you know it's just not it's not smooth it's just off and on off on off on that's it it's kind of annoying i do not use that one um but i'll show you led temp and what this does is it, this is um has a relationship with this function here on this settings window here the led color tab okay this led temp here is connected to this here so right now it's blue because my temperature is not above 40 degrees Celsius on the CPU block, okay? And it'll turn green when it's um, above 40. 
So in between 40 and 60 degrees, it'll turn green. When it's in between 60 and 80 degrees, it'll turn red. And that lets you know that your pump is no longer working or, there, or, or maybe your thermal pace is no good anymore and you might want to just service your, uh, your CLC cooler, okay? And I'll uh, call EVGA for some uh, customer support for that. But um, just make sure any anytime you guys, um, you know, come in these settings when they'll click OK for anything. But we're going to get to that in a second. I want to lose focus. Okay, next we have the LED rainbow. Now, this is the one I use because it goes through all the RGB colors on the CPU block. Okay, guys. So, it's straightforward and simple. Very easy to use. Okay. But let's go touch on this settings window here now. So we have a general tab and we have start minimize. So start the flow control software minimize and start this flow control software with Windows when it when Windows starts. So you can select that if you want to um, change your <clears throat> LED and pump speeds and all that. Just mess with the settings of this CLC, okay? Uh, CPU cooler. All right. So you want it to start with Windows, click that. If you want it to start minimize and not just pop up like a big window in the front, click this to activate this and then boom. Okay. You put those both on and it'll start minimize like this. All right. But me, I don't like it starting with Windows, so I turn it off. Now the next thing is check updates. I I set mine to never, but you have on you have an option for never on startup on startup daily on startup weekly and on startup monthly i select never because i like to check for my updates manually by clicking that button and then this will sh let you know if you have an update at all i'm currently up to date so no issues there now we have a screen capture hotkey that you can set i use the built-in print screen function for windows so i don't use this at all so the screen format is b bmp that i would select over jpeg and um the screenshot folder that it saves to is public pictures okay users public pictures screenshots and you can change that by clicking browse or you can just view what's in that folder by clicking view Make sure anything you change on these tabs, you press OK before you move to a new tab. Otherwise, it will not save. Now, next we have the LED color tab, which I told you is linked to the LED section here for the LED temp. Okay, or just in general, any of these LED functions. So let's just see here. Um, we have ambient color now this will just change the color of the LEDs on the CPU block and leave it as a solid static color so the next thing is you can pick any colors just to show you you know you got a selection of colors you can go through the RGB manual thing here and just move this all around and have fun with the color picking okay and if you want that to be select that but if you want to go to color to temperature okay select that and just like I told you in the video if it's below in between 0 and 40 degrees it'll stay a color of blue in between 40 and 60 degrees it'll stay a color of green and in between 60 and 80 degrees it'll stay a color of red and if you're in the red that's a problem okay if you're in the green in my opinion too it's a problem so you know um, just make sure you don't go above 50 degrees Celsius on this one because this is not the CPU temperature. This is the coolant temperature on the CPU block of the water cooler. So remember that it's not the same. Okay. So the next tab we have is the user interface tab and you can select language, English, show user interface hint icons. I, I selected that off show user interface tool tips i select that on so that way i can hover over something and it'll tell me what it is give me information on it okay um you select the skin select extra to get this to get the full skin that i'm using here for the flow control software 
you can select G uh, graphic user interface transparency so you can make it like that where you can see a background of other programs still all right it gives you a nice little thing you know effect you can do but it's not really useful in my opinion because I normally just minimize the program or close it all together but it's a cool feature they put in you know if if that's your thing all right and then you have the graphic user interface always on top and what that means is basically if you have another window um if you have another window right like let's say rise and open what this what this button will do is oh i'm sorry oh, just like i said right make sure if you change anything on this you ha in order for it to activate you have to press ok first okay so select it change what you change it then press ok to make sure it's, it's saved and activated but now what you'll see is that when I move this window here, it will not go above this program. So this becomes the main top window always permanently. So just make sure you select that off and press OK to bring it back to where you can change, put windows on top of it. Okay. And um, that is it. That's really it. And that's the flow control software overview. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, I will be bringing out a Ryzen Master tutorial on how to overclock your Ryzen 7 CPU. All right, guys. So anyway, comment, like, subscribe. It really helps. Um, and yeah, Nick Bled out. Peace.